Hey everyone. Thanks for watching a new pro revenge story from Reddit. I hope you liked them. The story is called, You think you can rip off my boyfriend for $500? Then file charges against him? Think again, my friend. Don't forget to subscribe for new content. As always, the story is written from the original poster's point of view. This happened a few years ago. My boyfriend and I were juniors in college. His car needed new tires and winter was coming. We lived in the backwards upper canyon in the Rocky Mountains, down a long dirt mountain road. Even with four-wheel drive, you need a decent set of tires to remain safe on the switchbacks. So, we poked around on Craigslist to see if we could possibly save some money on a set of lightly used winter tires. Winter tires can be very expensive, especially at that time of year in the Rockies. Everyone needs them. We find a woman about our age, who was selling a decent looking set of tires for around 500 bucks. Seemed like a decent deal, not too cheap but not too expensive. So, we go look at the tires and they looked good. One of the tires was flat, so we inquired about it. She said she took it in and the mechanic said that it was fine. It just needed a quick patch. No problem. We trusted her, handed her the money, and dropped off the car and the new tires at Big O to have them put on and get an alignment done. As we are waiting across the street at a cafe, the techs at Big O call and tell us they are unable to patch the flat, because there's a gash on the side wall. We told him, that there should be a mistake, as the woman assured us it would be fine. The techs then ask us, if she had old or new tires on her car when we met up with her. We then realized that, yes, actually, she had old tires on her car. The tech then informed us that we got scammed. We then called the woman and told her the tire couldn't be fixed and that we needed our money back. She was super rude and laughed at us and said something like, sorry, Craigslist cash transaction, next time, look a little closer. Real nice. She then hung up on us and wouldn't answer any more of our calls. So we left a note on her front door, where we had met her to purchase the tires, asking her to please call us back. We wanted to see if there was a way to work something out. We were broke college kids and needed at least a portion of that 500 back. Later that day, we get a call from the sheriff. He was saying, that this woman is claiming that my boyfriend was stalking and harassing her and that she was pressing charges. No way, so we told the sheriff the whole story. He was totally on our side. Unfortunately, it was a Craigslist transaction. There wasn't anything the cops could do regarding the tires. And now my boyfriend is having papers filed against him, and will have to go to court to fight her accusations. I was not about to let that happen to him. Especially not from this low-life scammer. So, naturally, I took matters into my own hands. If this woman thinks she is going to steal $500 from my man, then try to pull some crap that's going to put him in serious legal trouble, and thinks there won't be any repercussions, she is very sadly mistaken. A quick little backstory. I used to frequently post on an online forum dedicated to the band Fish. It's pretty much a cesspool of degenerates, but once in a while, there are some great discussions about the music and the community is generally very tight and supportive, bonded by the love we all share for the music. So, knowing these savages would have my back, I post the story about what happened, as well as her phone number. I posted it partly in letters, partly in numbers. I posted this all without my boyfriend's knowledge, because he would have told me not to and I didn't want him having a connection to it anyway. The next day, the sheriff calls my boyfriend. He was saying that the woman had received hundreds upon hundreds of phone calls from different people from all over the country and that she was terrified beyond words. Neither she nor the sheriff had any idea how this sheer number of people could possibly be calling her. All of whom are presumably ripping her a new one about cheating us out of these tires. My boyfriend, who is innocence I had maintained and who was equally as confused by the situation, clearly had no idea what the sheriff was talking about. There wasn't anything the police could do about a bunch of random calls from God knows who from God knows where, and no chance he could prove that my boyfriend had anything to do with it either. There were simply too many calls from too many places to even begin to find a source. The sheriff was on our side from the beginning because, although they couldn't do anything about it, saw the obvious scam and thought it was funny. The sheriff then notifies us that the scammer woman has retracted her statement, dropped all charges and she left us alone after that. I never told anyone I was the one who orchestrated the phone calls and texts. We never got our money back obviously. But I don't care. I'm sure she was dumbfounded by how so many crazy people were calling her. I don't even want to think about what they must have said to her. I can only imagine how confused and terrified she was. But I'm pretty sure she isn't ripping people off or filing false harassment charges anymore so, it is kind of a win. The next story is called, Don't Fire People, Who Don't Work For You. I had taken over running a small development team of nine for a relatively big company. We were there for basic, quick little bits of software that wouldn't make sense to outsource. 
The guy the first took over from ran the team as we lived in the 1980s. So I brought us into the modern age and surprise, surprise, within a few weeks, our team was finishing projects left, right and center. Everything was going great, my co-workers could take smoke breaks and listen to music. Our internal clients were kept up to date with their projects. And my boss thought I was some kind of software prodigy, as productivity had gone through the roof. Honestly, this was more indicative of how bad it was before, rather than anything I did. Then comes Richard. He is like the worst person you ever had to work with. He has been there too long to fire and delight in slapping people in the face with their seniority, regardless of whether or not they have anything to do with you. First, he sends us a project and marks it critical, as in, everyone stop what you're doing, no this needs to be done yesterday. I politely send him a message and ask him if I can move it down to medium priority. There was little to no time limit and we had other projects to deal with. He replied, no, it needs to be done now. Get to it. I'd like to remind everyone that he is not my boss and has no authority over me or my team. So I send his message to my boss and the other department heads, who we had projects for at the time. Hi all, I hope you are enjoying your day. Richard has asked me to work on this project for his department. However, he wants it to be done now, which would delay your projects. Would that be okay with everyone? Turns out that's a no and I downgrade his project. Now, Richard starts to become a real douchebag. A week or two later, I check our task management software and notice that one of our programmers called Shia was falling a bit behind. I go to ask her what's up and she looks like she's about to have a panic attack. I ask her what's wrong and it turns out Richard had threatened to fire her if she didn't start working on his project immediately. I calm her down, let her take a break, tell her to start working on her regular projects and to send him to me if he says something again. I then fire off an email to him and my boss, reminding him that any threats of termination need to go through me and HR first. Who works on what projects and when is determined by our schedule and myself. And if a project's deadline is moved up, I should be informed directly, not via my team. Turns out that Richard is infamous for making threats like this. But because nobody took them seriously, I was the first to remind him he had no authority over other departments. I didn't find out until later, but apparently, he had a meltdown at the boss, about how incredibly disrespectful I was. He tried to file a formal complaint, but it was rejected. Doing my job properly isn't actually a problem. Who knew? At this time, I accepted a better job and was going to put in my notice. But I wanted to wait until after our latest project, the Ninja Report, was done, as it was a big deal for my team. This Ninja Report was part of a presentation by our boss's boss's boss. And it was marked critical, so all of us were working hard, to make sure we did a good job and got it in on time. Now finally, we get to the revenge. I'm plugging in a switch under the desk, when someone taps me hard on the shoulder. Just a minute mate. I stand up and stare directly into the red face of Richard. He was red with anger, ready to expel his rage all over the office. I am not your mate. You need to learn your place in this company. The usual stuff you can expect. As this grown man is screaming at me in full view of my team, it suddenly dawns on me. I get severance, have another job lined up and really have no reason to deal with this. I want my project done now. He continues to yell. Now, I could have told him about the ninja report. I could have said a lot of things. But I just smiled. I looked him in the eyes and said, as long as I'm working here, the schedule isn't changing. Predictably, he responds with, then you are fired. I grab my things and leave. As I'm leaving, one of my team comes up, looking like a deer in the headlights and asks what they should do. Easy. First, I want everyone except you to stop working on the ninja report. Second, at the end of the day send an email to the boss and the big boss. Let them know what happened. Explain to them, that ninja report is going to be a week late. See you all for drinks on Friday. I wake up bleary eyed the next day to a call. Hello? It was my boss. Hi, look. I'm sorry about what Richard said. He doesn't actually have the authority to fire you and the ninja report can't be late, we need to fix this. Oh, I'm sorry. I've actually accepted another job. But don't worry, I figured this would happen. I asked one of my team to work on it privately. If they start working on the ninja report again, they should be able to get it done on time. My boss tries to get me to come back. But I made it clear that wasn't going to happen. I recommended one of my team members as a replacement and thank him for the opportunity. He's pretty cool about it, confirms I'll be getting severance and tells me he can use me as a reference. Friday drinks roll around and we have a lot to celebrate. The ninja report was done on time and given everything that happened, it made my team look great. 
I got a new job, teammate got a promotion and Big Wig was really eager to learn why his subordinate subordinate fired the leader of the team he picked himself and nearly tanked the project. I'm proud to report that the office is now 100% Richard Free. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Have a great day. Bye bye.